Remove the men and let them see Jesus. In Jesus' yeah. name I pray. Amen. 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 So if you open up your Bibles to Jonah, first chapter. Jonah 1, verse 1. That's where we're going today. Jonah 1, verse 1. We'll be going through Jonah 1 through 3 this morning. So we're going to start at verse 1. Thank you. That sounds so much better. I might. So I'm going to read to you. I have uh, the American Standard Version. Excuse me. And I'll read in your hair. Now the word of Jonah came unto now the word of Jehovah, excuse me, came unto Jonah, the son of Amaritai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of God, and he went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof, went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of Jehovah. Another version says that Jonah went to go to flee to Tarshish and he tried to flee from the presence of the Lord. Yes. Let's start at verse 1. So there's not many times in the Bible where God actually talks to somebody directly. So in order for that to happen, there must have been an intimate, I'm going to assume right now, there was an intimate relationship with God. Because many times we've heard that God has spoken to people in the Bible and there was a trembling, there was a fear, like in Moses' time, right? So they couldn't even take the voice of God, let alone the presence of God. So we have to assume here in this text that Jonah and God had a great relationship for him to directly talk to Jonah. What an amazing thing. So as, as we're I'm looking at this verse, the first thing that caught on my mind, to know the voice of God. So as parents, we know when we talk to our kids, our kids don't even have to visibly see us. They know our voice. Mm -hmm. And we could be sitting in church, Greg, when we were younger, and our parents are on the pulpit, and we get one look. Uh, we, we know what that means, right? Straighten up, fly right, stop talking to your friends, take a good body mouth. It said a whole thing, just a facial expression alone. But to be in in an area where you can stop and close your eyes and hear God's voice must be an amazing thing, directly. No, not through some sermon, not through some song, not, not through your mom or your aunt or somebody who said, but to directly hear the voice of God. I stopped right there because I love it when God speaks. There's a peace that comes over you there's a joy that comes over you that is like none other. So here it is, Jonah has heard God. And as God is talking, Jonah is listening. You would assume so. Like really intently listening to what God has to say because they have a strong relationship. But as God is talking and saying, I want you to go to Nineveh. My heart is breaking. In this very text, you've got to see the love of God. He could have struck them down and said, you're bad, we're done. But he said their wickedness, one, one version, King James Version said, their wickedness has come before me. Meaning he is noticing how bad that city is. How the decisions and the choices against God are. And they just need to be told about God. He just wants to send, so he sends his beloved Jonah. And Jonah is listening. He's listening, as we intently do to God. But here's my thing. By the time you get to verse three, there's no verse in between. We already see he's dodging. He's going somewhere else. So for me, it made me understand that even when God was talking, he already made his decision that 
he was going to be disobedient. He already made his decision that he disagreed. How many times we love God and we love the grace of God and we love the compassion of God and we love the gifts of God, but even when he's talking, we decide right there as he's talking and telling us the direction we need to go, we disagree with him. We've already made up our mind and started forging a plan to go somewhere else, even though we love this God we talk about. We are not, to me, Jonah didn't even stop to say, let me consider your ways. Let me think about what you're really trying to say. Instead of saying, those people are so bad, they don't need your grace. The very grace that I depend on, the very love that I depend on. Jonah had a temper tantrum. He wanted it all for himself. He didn't think that they were worthy. How many times are we in environments? We have them in our family. We have them at our work. We have them in our schools. We have them living door next door neighbor and think they're the worst people in the world and say, that person's not worthy of God. I'm not going to talk to them about Jesus. I'm not going to invite them to church. I'm not even going to show them kindness because they are not worthy. The very kindness that brought you in the seat you're sitting down right now. The very kindness and the very love that saved you from some disastrous situations. Right. You're saying that the person that you're thinking of is not worthy. Hmm. How? So here we come down to verse 3. Jonah says, okay, I heard everything you had to say, but I disagree. They are not worthy to hear your word, and I am not going to go tell it. So I heard you, God, Thank you for having this conversation with me, but I'm going to go elsewhere. If we look on a map to where Jonah was and where Nineveh was versus Nineveh to Tarshish, we see that Tarshish is on the other side of the world. It's on the other side of the map. He was running as far as away. Now, here's my thing. We believe that God is omnipresent, don't we? Yes. So how you gonna run from God? <laughs> if we know that He is everywhere, He sees everything, He knows everything. How are you gonna run from God? So Jonah takes up himself and he says, "I'm gonna listen." In this text, I was talking to my brother about this. I believe Jonah was a rich man. All right. Here's why. Last minute, you ever, you ever tried to take a cruise last minute? Girl, you got some money? I need some. Okay? You ever tried to take a cruise or a trip last minute and to the other side of the world? Okay, let's say we're going to go to the airport right now, Chris, and we're going to book a ticket to go to New York right now. Do you know how much that ticket is going to cost? Full price. And we want a direct flight. There's nothing in the Bible that said the ship stopped anywhere. It says one place. Tarshish, and he bought a ticket, and he went down into the ship. So almost to me, it seemed like the ship was abandoned. So he must have paid triple the cost. So he cleans out his bank account to run from God, to go somewhere else because he disagreed with the choice of God. Jonah takes it upon himself to now act as God because he's now saying, they are not worthy. Who is the only person who can say that? So let's look at this cost of disobedience. Number one, he disagreed with God. He tried to put God in a box. How many times we say, God, I trust you. God, I will go where you call me to. God, I will do what you ask me to do. But then when he tells you the direction he wants to go, you tell him, no, I don't think that's the right direction. Let's go somewhere else. Because you're putting God in a box. Okay, so let's make this simpler. So you are searching for a job, okay? And 
and we're looking at jobs. Now, this job pays a lot of money, but it requires you to not be in church as often. It requires you not to give to community service. It requires you to take away time from your family. Now, here's this other job. It pays much less. The benefits are not great, but you're able to do what God asks you to do. Which job are you going to take? So I'm going to take the job with the more money. I'm going to take the job and take away from my family and take away from church and take away from the things that God asked me to do. Because I think it's better than the low paying job. Now the reverse can happen where God is giving you a higher paying job because he's also giving you the resources to take care of your family, to spend more time at church. So he has ways and plans. Or there's somebody at that job specifically he wants you to minister to. God has a thousand solutions to one. So we put God in a box and we say, okay, God, I won't sing that song today. I won't go talk to that person today because I disagree with your direction. Or let, let's take it a little bit closer. I won't have that conversation I need to have with my family, with my friends. I won't go to that church anymore because I disagree with your decision on who's leading the church or who's in the church. So number one, Jonah disagreed with God. We put God in a box and we tell God how to navigate our lives. We say, no, we don't want young people in the church. We say, no, we don't want that kind of music in the church. We say, no, we don't want this. When God is saying, I need you to let me be God. <laughs> because it's not, you're the, not the only person I love. You're not the only person I want. You're not the only person who needs to come to my grace. I need, I need you to let me be God. Amen. So number one, Jonah disagreed with God. Number two, he paid a great cost. Yes. So we want to look at, he looked at money and, and paid a cost of money. But what about the energy that it took for him to plan a trip to go far away? It said that the one commentator says on this that Jonah must have fell into a deep sleep. You ever made a choice? And you ignored everything and everyone and every consultation. That's what Jonah did with his sleep. He ignored God. You're thinking of sleep as closing my eyes and, and, and falling into a deep sleep. But deep the, the type of sleep we're talking about here is an ignoring of everything around you. Yeah. And as we hear later in the story, that caused other people problems. But right here, we need to look at that he paid a lot. Now, the third thing about this very three verses, and especially this last one, is that he ran. Pancho, come here for a minute, please. He ran. And Pancho, you need breakfast this morning? Yeah, we gonna have to work out. Come on. So I need you to see something. I'm learning about illustrations. I want you to stand here and run in place. Just start running. And don't stop till I tell you. So many times we are like Pancho. We are saying that we are going to run from God. We make choices, we, we start, you know, buying this house over here or going to this job or having this friendship or, you know, saying I'm going to work more hours at work. Don't stop. Keep going. Keep up the same energy. Remember, we're running. We are running away from God. Now, in a little while, Pontius should start getting tired, but he's not going to admit he's tired because he has a focus. He is running away. Pancho is our Jonah today. And he's running away from God. So how many times have you made a choice to say that you're not going to go in God's direction? You get tired, you get frustrated, you run out of money, 
you run out of energy, and problems keep on coming and coming and coming and coming because you're running. Keep going, don't stop. Keep the same energy. This is what we're doing, and we're saying, God, we're running from you. Now notice he's not physically moving around anywhere. This is what it's like to run from God. Uh, you ain't going nowhere. You can't go nowhere. All right now. You're running in the same direction, and sometimes you're running in circles. Keep running. Keep running. This is what we do. Because when we stop, we are back at the same place that God asks us to be at. True. So true. And if we choose to be obedient, we got to go do the same thing he asks us to do. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. The cost of disobedience. So when you disagree with God, you pay a lot in this disobedience, and then you can never really get your own way. Is the cost of disobedience worth it? How many times have we chosen to say, okay, I I'm going to go to church and I'm going to do the routines and I'm going to do the rituals, but that's it. I'm not going to get involved. I'm not going to do this. So where does the intimacy and the love of God come in? The same thing that he thought nobody else was worthy of, he was beginning to lose. That love and that intimate time, because when he ran away, there's nothing that says he continued to speak to God. Now, God continued to speak to him by different circumstances. But Jonah didn't want to hear it, bless you, because Jonah was not going to obey God. He felt that Nineveh was not worth it. So this is a prophet. He is sent into the world to minister. He is sent in the world to save hearts. He is sent in the world to convert. And he's telling God who is worthy of his grace and his mercy. How many times have you looked and been into a situation with somebody and said, they are not worthy? Because you say they're not worthy. But what does God say? What is God asking you to do that seems so hard, that seems so hurtful, that seems so much that you're saying, no, I'm not going to do this? What is your Nineveh? What are you running away from so much so? What are you needing to stop doing? What job are you needing to stop working? What time do you need to spend with your family? The cost disobedience. I'm a single mom. My kids are in college now. Praise the Lord. Amen. I made it. Yeah. I love that. Love that, Chris. Right? But one of the things I didn't do well, and I admit it, was parents. Because I was broken. No matter if you're in a two-parent home or a one-parent home, I was talking about Greg, talking to Greg about this this week. If you're broken, you pass it on. And as women, we're the nurturers. We pass on that brokenness. My cost, and I love my kids dearly, but my cost of disobedience, of having them early, has left marks on them that now I can't even embrace. The cost of disobedience. The cost of disobedience of having kids early caused my mother, my beautiful mother, to go gray. The cost of disobedience caused my father, strong Jamaican man, to shed tears till this day. The cost of my choices has caused me to wait 20 years before I actually answered a call that I was called to from the time I was a little girl. The cost of disobedience. The cost of disobedience caused me not to nurture relationships I shouldn't be nurturing. From my family to my friends. The cost of disobedience. And we ain't going to talk about the weight of having babies. Amen? I'm still writing that 20 years later. How to take that out. Right? The cost of disobedience. The cost of disobedience caused my church friends to question God. Yes. Because I was in church. Hmm. I loved it. I loved having worship.
I love singing. I love leading. Natural born leader. But when I made that choice, people questioned God. Yeah. How can she, that person who loves God so much, how can she make that choice? When Jonah made the choice to run as far away as he did, he was saying he knew better than God on how to direct his life. The very God who came down on this earth to save him, he knew better than him. The cost of disobedience will cause a ripple effect in your life. It will affect your family, it will affect your job. And we don't know how long you're going to stay there. Mercy, mercy. Which soul got delayed because you made a choice of disobedience? Which person didn't come to church yet because they haven't met you because you're over there being disobedient? Which person didn't just see a little bit of Jesus in the five minutes that they met you at the grocery store because your mind is somewhere else it should not be? The cost of disobedience. Which person on your job are you not looking at to minister to because your mind is so fed up in yourself and your temper tantrums, you can't see the very opportunity that God is giving you? Which person in your family has not yet known the love of God because you are so full of yourself, you won't sit down and say, hey, you want to come to church with me? What you say? The cost of disobedience can delay somebody from coming to God. The cost of disobedience can delay your blessing. There is a story, hypothetical story, that I've been told many, many years. Chris, you may have heard the story. There's a guy, he dies, he goes to heaven, okay? This is hypothetical, all right? We all believe that when we die, okay, that we, we sleep, right? Yes, yes. right, okay. So this is a hypothetical situation. So he died, right? He went to heaven, right? And he's walking in heaven with God, and you know, they're talking, and he's admiring heaven, and the golden streets, and all the beautiful houses, and mansions, and whatever the case may be, and he comes up to his mansion, and inside the mansion, there's this big room. It has boxes, and boxes, and boxes, and he, he gets this tour, and God shows him the room and says, yeah, that's a nice room. It had some pretty boxes. But let's keep going. And he ignores the room. And he's like, but wait a minute. What, what's in that room? He says, I don't think he wants to know. So he keeps on asking. He says, wait, wait. I can't go any further until I know what's in that room. So they open the door. And the room on every box says blessings. It's the blessings you miss when you were disobedient. We don't only come to God for what we get. I'm ready to close. We don't only go to God for something we get. We go to God because we also have a mission. We were created, made to worship, set up to serve. It's a, it's a tagline for my company. And it was made that way because that's how I genuinely feel that God feels about us. He made us to worship, but he set us up to serve so that other people can worship. The cost of disobedience in our lives would cause us to make selfish choices that will temporarily satisfy us, but long-term destroy us. The cost of disobedience, of saying, God, not now. I don't want to serve you now because, you know, them crazy church folk, they, 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 you know, no, no, I ain't ready. When I'm ready and I have the party out of me, then, then I'll come and serve you. But then you don't know if tomorrow's even promised to you. The, the cost of disobedience will take us on journeys and into places, environments, and into emotional places where we can't even get out of unless we're praying through them. The cost of disobedience will cause spirits to enter into our lives that only the blood of Jesus can remove. 
The cost of disobedience will cause us to gain relationships and friendships that we should have never had in the first place. And they drain us from every energy and everything inside of us, but we are being disobedient because we know we're satisfied with that. What God is trying to do with Jonah is say, listen, I made you for something. I created you to go send my word. I created you to go yeah. preach. You need to go save whoever. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And because of pride, or because of some decision he made at church board, he doesn't want to go to Nineveh. College Hill, I'm going to say this to you. There is something in your life that God has been talking to you about. He's been saying to you, I need you to go do this. You know what it is. I need you to go do this. I need you to go say this. I need you to go to that place. I need you to go to that person. He has been calling you and speaking to you, and you say, no, I don't like them. No, they're not worthy. They don't have the right profile to worship you. They don't wear the right clothes to come in here. No, God, I don't want to do this. Because of your thought process. And today, you've heard what happens. We know this is the rest of the story of Jonah. He ends up into a bad storm that wrecks everybody else's life, cost of disobedience. He ends up into a big fish to try to learn. God is still trying to say, I, I'm, I'm after you, Jonah. I need you to hear me because there's some lives I want to save. And for some of us, we can stay in that fish 10 years, 20 years. Some of us is three months and we learn our lesson. What is it going to take for you to just say, yes, God? Even when it hurts, yes. Even when I have to have the hardest conversation with somebody I love, yes. I don't want to do it my way. It doesn't work. Yes. I will move there. I don't want to, God, but yes, I will do it. Because your way is better than me paying out for the rest of my life for a choice I made in two seconds. What is it going to take for you to realize that it's his way is a better way? Yeah, yeah, man. What is the depth that you have to get to in your disobedience for you to understand his way is better? My daughter hasn't stepped foot in the church in five months. to my children. I just stopped going to church. Because I was a church hurt. Some of you have been through that here. I was church hurt. That, and I stopped going. But the, the cost of my disobedience today makes me prostrate on my face to say, God, break it.
your cost of disobedience can go to generations. But it takes a few minutes to say, I'm sorry. Yeah. It takes a few minutes to say, I love you. Yeah. And we're going to work it out. It takes a few minutes to say, I need you here. It takes a few minutes to say, God, yes. If that's you today, and you want to say, God, yes, don't stand up because the preacher is asking you to. You truly say, I don't know where to start. I don't know how to begin. But God, yes, I will stop being disobedient. I will go do join the church. I will go be the leader you called me out to do. I'll go resolve my family issues. Yes, yes, God, it's hard and it hurts. Yes, God, I will do it. I will go talk to that loved one I haven't talked to in years, and we're gonna pray this thing out. Yes, God, there's a place, there's a person he wants you to talk to. Yes, we all have many of us in our lives, and we all gone through the cost of disobedience. But today we're saying yes. I want to change that today. I don't know where to begin. But today, yes, I will listen to you. Yes, I will go. Yes, I will do. Yes, I will speak. Yes, I will say. I no longer want to be disobedient. I want you, God, bow your heads and close your eyes as we're praying. Somebody here has been hearing God speak to them. Somebody here has been hearing the pull on their heart. And it started before you even entered this door. It started at your house. It started on your job. It started different places. God has been talking to you saying, I want you. I want you. I died on the cross. I knew what it was going to take because I loved you. I want you. I know what you did yesterday. I know what you did last week, but I want you. He's been, he's been talking to you and speaking to you. And Greg is going to sing a, a verse of this song. And I want you to hear and feel God while he's singing. Keep your eyes closed. Prayer warriors, start praying. Today, somebody needs to come and say yes to God. I don't know where to begin. I've been sitting here and the elders have been talking to me and the pastor has been talking to me. But I don't, you know, yesterday I was in the Okay, but you're here in church today. Thank you. Amen. Yesterday I was doing something I shouldn't do. Okay, but you're here in church because you want God, obviously. If that's you and, and you want to come and say, God... I don't know what this walk means, but I'm willing to try. If that's you, you can come on up. The doors of the church are open. We're here to receive you. Greg is going to sing. And we're going to pray.
obedient to the Holy Spirit. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. God, we thank you. Everybody's praying in this room. God, we thank you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. God, we thank you for your compassion that you would cover us, Jesus. God, right now, we don't
You're a good old God. Thank you for today. Thank you that we 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 be able to see another day to still alive today. A lot of people not not alive today. The mercy Christ. That we finish today and go home. Please help us to be safe and help us to see long as we can go. It is your will, Christ. And thank you for today and please help everybody else along the way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Um, you bring the offering, please walk, walk, walk outside of the aisle. Thank you.